from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. This is a safe place. It's a place where we can feel free sharing our feelings. Think of my office as a nest in a tree of trust and understanding. It's okay, honey. That's why we came. I, I guess I, deep down, I'm, I'm feeling a little confused. I mean, suddenly you get married and you're supposed to be this entirely different guy. I don't, I don't, I don't feel different. I, I mean, take take yesterday for example. We were we were out at the Olive Garden, which was lovely, and. Uh, I had to look over at a certain point during the meal and see a, a waitress taking her order, and uh, and I found myself wondering uh, what color her underpants might be, her panties. Odds are they're probably basic white cotton, but I, I started thinking, well, maybe they're maybe they're silk panties. Maybe it's a thong. Maybe it's something really cool that I don't even know about, you know. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that that now that I'm married, I, I'm definitely feeling a little freaked out about the fact that I'm going to have sex with only one person for the rest of my life. I, I started feeling as if... What? What, I thought we were in the trust tree with, in the nest, are we not? It's like this 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. We want to remind you boys at this very delicate time of year that Valentine's Day is coming up. It's just a few weeks away. It is time, if you haven't already made yourself scarce for the holidays that just passed, it is time to start distancing yourself from whoever you're dating in time for February 14th. You do not want to be taking her to dinner. You do not want to be buying her flowers. You do not want to be buying her any jewelry, God forbid, or any other gifts. Valentine's Day is the most sexist holiday there is. It is a holiday for chicks. It is a day when we are supposed to do stuff for them to show that their vagina is worth more than anything we have. And it isn't. Because there's plenty more vaginas where that one came from. You need to make sure you have a, a a a way of disappearing around about February 14th and preferably uh, for several days before if not several weeks before uh, any excuse is good you got a lot of uh, work you'll be working late uh you have to travel out of town on business or just stop returning her phone calls for a while put her on ice it all depends on how well you know these chicks but remember, being with her on Valentine's Day has implications. Just like New Year's Eve, only worse, okay? If she's with you on Valentine's Day, that means you've chosen her over any other woman you might be stooping right now. It means she thinks this relationship might have a future. That would include, uh, you know, rice being thrown and diamonds being purchased. You don't want her getting that idea because you are just in it for the sex. So you have to make sure that you are not with her. There's no expensive meals. 
There's no flowers. There's no meeting her family. There's no meeting her friends. She does not meet your friends or family. You're not making reservations. Put that phone down. If you are making a reservation for dinner on February 14th, put the phone down. I'm serious. The hell are you doing? Do you know how much that's going to cost? They always have these prefix menus, tasting menus, expensive menus for Valentine's Day because they know that the restaurants are going to be sold out. They're going to be overrun. By the way, in case you don't think about what you look like, see, I get to watch you as a dispassionate observer. If I happen to be in a restaurant on February the 14th, I see what's going on. Generally, I try to avoid restaurants on February 14th. Why should I wait in line for a reservation behind all you beaten dogs? But I must say that when I have been in a restaurant on February the 14th, there you all are. There you are, uncomfortably wearing that shirt with a collar, maybe a tie, maybe not, and a jacket. And there you are, fumbling with the menu and looking like you're um, just sweating your balls off there. She looks, you know, as usual, like uh, like the fairy princess. She's going to order some very expensive stuff you're going to be paying for, her and you're going to be pulling her chair out for her and all that, and you just look like the the sweaty high school kid in a suit who's, you know, taking her out to the prom or something. She looks like she's getting everything she wants, and you look like you'd rather be anywhere in the world. Think about it. That's how it looks to the rest of us. Men hate Valentine's Day. Don't go against your principles and start making plans for Valentine's Day. Now, this does not, by the way, this does not apply to married men. If you are a married man, you've already bought into the program. You are stuck. You have to do Valentine's Day. You have to. You have no choice. You have signed on for the program. You have, you have drunk the Kool-Aid, my friend, and so you are stuck. If you are married, February the 14th, you have got to produce... And it goes all the way right up to the bedroom, baby. Even the chicks who have not been putting out, (laughs) the wives and girlfriends who have not putting out, have been putting out guaranteed you, like you have a gun to your head, you are going to have to perform on February 14th. So you're going to have to go to a restaurant, wear an uncomfortable suit, sit there and try to make small talk with this chick that you really have nothing to say to. Then she'll go to the ladies' room, and you'll stand there holding her little purse, and you'll stand there with the leftovers wrapped in tinfoil that looks like a little swan. You'll be standing there like a a little pussy boy, like a beaten dog. I've seen you boys standing outside the ladies' room with that swan and the purse. And she takes as long as she possibly can, so guys like me can eyeball you outside the bathroom. Do you really want to do that? And then after all of this, not only do you have to produce, but she thinks this is going to start leading in some productive direction for her, like like you're going to sign the contract, like you're going to marry her. Do you really want her thinking that you might marry her? Do you really want her thinking she's more important than she is? You really want to be in a position where you have to tell her you love her or send her a card that says you love her? Come on. We all know why you're hitting it. Why would you let yourself get into that position? Your professor standing here at the podium right now tells you it is time to start distancing yourself from whatever chicks you are dating, especially if you're dating more than one. Because one of them is going to, they're all going to want to be the one that you take out on February the 14th. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to give these chicks the wrong idea. You'll never, ever get rid of them. And believe me, you want to get rid of them. So uh, start making your plans. Stop returning her calls. By the way, by all means, do not respond to her texts asking where you are, 
what you're doing, what time you're coming over. Start becoming more unresponsive to the texts. Just kind of keep it on the DL for a few weeks. And then after Valentine's Day is over, you reemerge. Oh, my God, work has been so tough lately. Oh, my family has had so many obligations. Oh, my, I've had so many things I've had to do. And then you can go back to hitting it again. But send the right message on Valentine's Day. You don't give a crap about her. She doesn't mean anything to you. She's just a human toilet, okay? Send the proper message. Don't be using Hallmark to send a message. Send a message the right way. Now, as your professor, I am here to help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, most importantly to avoid marriage. I am here to help you save money, time, and energy. Money, time, and energy. Why waste money, time, and energy on women who are not going to give you what you came for, which is sex? And I'm here to help you do that. And ladies, if you disagree with anything your professor has to say, I am more than happy to entertain your little thoughts. Just start dialing. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Likas 101 ought to be a required course for every child entering elementary school. And then they should give it to them again in junior high, and they should give them a refresher course in high school. And if they ever make it to college, which I'm afraid most of your listeners don't, they should teach an advanced course. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's like us 101. I am your professor at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Mary, you're in the classroom with your professor. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, I just wanted your screener to give you a message, but he wouldn't. He wanted me to tell you. So, okay, I've been listening. Yes, he's not a telephone operator, okay? His purpose is to screen you to go on the air. Oh, well, I didn't want to embarrass you in front of everybody. You can't possibly you. embarrass me. <laughs> okay, then. Why do you keep saying Valentine's Day? What? You keep saying Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, yes. It has an N, not an M. It's I, not Valentine's Day. Darling, get a new battery for your hearing aid, okay? I'm a professional speaker. I know. That's why I'm going crazy. Listen to Hello? <laughs> it's not Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. Now get it straight. C A L E N as in Nancy. I swear you said Valentine. T I N as in Nancy. E. I can't believe you're not well informed about how to pronounce Valentine's Day. I know you're well informed. I agree with you on every single thing you say. It's just, I swear I heard you say Valentine's Darling, Day. Darling, get I'm... it. You need a new radio. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm a professional. Do you really think I don't know how to pronounce Valentine's Day? <laughs> Sounds better now. You did it again. <laughs> All right, Tom. Have a good day. Thank you, darling. <laughs> darling. <laughs> they want to hate me, and they can't do it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Jordan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jordan. How are you doing? Doing okay. Pretty good. So, hey, I have a question. Does yeah. the uh, rule just like Christmas uh, with the bars, do you think that's going to apply for Valentine's Day? By all means. In fact, before Christmas, I pointed out that uh, New Year's Eve and Valentine's Day are two times that you should be out. In fact... On the last couple of Valentine's Days, uh, J, uh, Dean J. D'Amelio and I went out. How'd you guys do? Well, anybody who saw me last year, I, I had, uh, I was uh, two fisting. Yeah, Tom, you're, you're a good guy. Uh, any, uh, by the way, anybody who was at Lola's last year, they saw this. I had two women, two of them. Oh, nice, nice. And I yeah. recommend, I highly recommend, if you want to get laid, any chick who's at a bar on Valentine's Day instead of uh, 
<laughs> Instead of uh, at dinner uh, with her little uh, uh, aluminum tinfoil swan uh, standing there with her leftovers, uh, that woman is feeling sorry for herself and has very low self-esteem that night, feeling nobody loves her, and you can dive right in. I'm taking advantage of this one, Tom. I've been telling everybody. You've heard guys call in. You heard the guys call in about Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Yeah, I missed that one, but man, I wish I did. I was I was actually in Colorado snowboarding, but uh, too bad. Yes, um, you go out on February fourteenth, but don't go to a restaurant. You go to a bar, like a dive bar. You think, or more of a uh, the martini bar. bars are good. Yeah, go there. Go to like a martini bar. The one we went to the last two years is uh, Lola's on Fairfax. Fairfax. Yes. Dean and I went out to Lola's on Fairfax, and uh, I picked up chicks like there was no tomorrow. It was out of control. Yeah, I just got a fresh suit for my uh, birthday. Look at that. So, uh, I'm going to take advantage of this little suit I got here. But, uh, yeah, last year, actually, I bailed out on my girlfriend on a Valentine's Day without even listening to you. I've only listened to you for about a year, about a year now, and oh. uh, doing pretty good, Tom. Thanks for all the guidance. Did you unload her finally permanently? Uh, yeah, she's long gone, man, long gone. I actually called Goodness. you about her. Uh, she she told me she was on birth control a long time ago mm -hmm. and uh, lied about it. And then uh, I got got a call one day and uh, didn't know what was going on. And uh, she called me saying she had a kid or she just got an abortion. And I was just like, oh, my God. But uh, that was another story. Well, you're a lucky but, uh, man. Now make sure you got some condoms now, will you please? Oh, uh, hey, trust me, I got the family pack, the economy pack. There we go. <laughs> Rocking them good. Hey, Tom, can you take me out the bong rip? I can indeed. Here you go. No cost. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Carrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Carrie. How are you? Do you care? <laughs> Not really. I didn't think so. Okay, first I got to say, uh, what you say about Valentine's Day is crazy. Not only is it one-sided, but everything should always be equal for boys and girls. You always make well, it one-sided. Everything, yeah, everything is equal. That's so to make it equal, exactly. you go out and buy yourself dinner on February 14th, buy your own I drinks, and I'll buy mine. No, it's like then it's you buy equal something for your for your significant other, and they buy something for you in return. And one thing also, I don't generally like to... generally men do not get anything near what they're expected to pay Last for on year, Valentine's Day. I got Day. my boyfriend a guitar on Valentine's Day. Well, that's he got good. me a digital camera, and I got him a guitar, so it was equal. I always make. Everything Did he have to important. take you to dinner also? No, I made him dinner at home. Mm. He rented a movie, mm -hmm. and okay. And also, you say oh, women are just. Toilet? That does not make any sense. Human okay. toilet, yes. That is that is crap. Like, okay, a girl cannot be um, called a toilet. How appropriate. Huh? Okay, okay uh, that, how can, why can I say a guy is a toilet? A girl just can use a guy, go around those, like, nasty girls that go around to all these guys and whatever. Guys are, girls that get called names like that. Guys can be well, I mean, but, but well, you can call us any names you like, dear. I, I, I really doesn't offend me, but uh, the reason is simple. Uh, just like uh, a man uses a urinal for a particular purpose, uh, that's what a man uses a female for. Used. Why should a girl be used? That does not make any because, sense. Because that's what you're there for. Okay, we are put on earth to have sex with and then thrown off to the side. I do not think so. Like you can go. How do you know what you were put on this earth to do? Because you're put on this earth, okay, what are you, how is a girl different from a guy? A girl is put on earth, so, okay. No, you, guys, I, I, you don't have to talk to me anymore after sex either. I'm perfectly happy to have sex with you if you never talk to me again. That would be I great. I would never, ever in my life have sex with you, even if you That's nice. okay, but you know you what? Are, Many do. Like, Many okay, uh, do. Well, then those girls, and that's also wrong what you say, that you say you take advantage of vulnerable girls. Like at a bar when they're sad on Valentine's Yes, Day, like, that's a perfect time. That is messed up. Like, wow. Nothing that's messed like up about it. A girl. That's like all, all's a girl. fair. All's fair. If somebody no, is not. out there, if somebody goes to a bar, they are there for the taking. That's why they went to a bar. 
Well, then those girls like need help, and then they should be taken advantage. Well, of well, why, well, well if they need help, then they, they should go to a psychiatrist, not a bar. But if they go to a bar, if they go to a bar, they're going there to get laid. They're going there to do something they're going to regret for the rest of their lives. And why shouldn't guys have that opportunity to take advantage of that? Okay, so you're saying that a guy should take advantage of an upset girl, and that they're just there. Well, for let me ask you this question: If a girl goes to a sorry. bar, if a girl goes to a bar looking to hook up with somebody because she's sad, should men boycott her? Uh, they should leave her alone and let her. But be that's not what she came there for. She yeah. came there to get male attention. She came there because she feels low and she wants to get some male attention. And I guess the guys then that would take advantage of her are just as low as she is then because they are. Oh, we don't care. Why don't we care? Low. Oh, I mean, the, uh, the point I mean, is. Hey, we always are looking for whatever vulnerability will allow for you to give it up to us. Okay, well, okay, that is, then I guess the guys that would go out there and do it are just much should be as much respected as that girl. As we, really as we really don't care. We really don't care. A nice guy would ask a girl out in a polite way and oh then my. offer to pay on the first date. No, 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 date, no, absolutely not. Is. No, my students, people. my students, we try to find sex the quickest, cheapest way we can get it. And that one of the like one of the best okay. ways to get it is to go out to bars on Valentine's Day, find all the women who didn't get invited to dinner, didn't get flowers and hearts full of candy at their office and everything. They are sitting there boo-hoo-hooing into their apple martinis and their, their Long Island iced teas, and that's where you move in for the kill. And it's a very productive evening for my boys. Okay, so your boys are promoted to go around spreading diseases like animals, humping everything that moves. I see how it is. Like, if that's oh, the yes. guys, well, I'll tell you, what. you are like a, a, a teacher from hell, because why would you be teaching guys to, like, basically hump anything that moves? I tell like, good. Oh, no, I think they, they, go, go do that. they should go get the hottest work. chicks they can get with the lowest possible self-esteem. Okay, there you go. Those low girls, I guess that's set for your students then. You aim for all those low girls. All your students will be set for yes. every low girl out the there. Lower the lower your, self, the lower your self-esteem is. By the way, who would want to listen to your trap, for example? The lower your self-esteem is, the more likely it is you're going to give me what I want. Well, then, okay, there you go. Your guys, you're setting them up with the low lives of life. The girls that are... They're like not the, low lives. Low. They have low, having low self-esteem doesn't make you a low life. Yes, it does. It means that you probably had something wrong. That so you think any woman who has low self-esteem is a low life? Yes, I mean, she probably dealt with a guy that t told her negative things throughout her whole relationship or guys that have done wrong things to her or guys that took advantage of her or that's like... Darling, some of them are very simply very beautiful women that nobody will talk to because everybody thinks they've already got a date on Friday night. Uh, some of them uh, broke up with boyfriends uh, for any number of reasons. It could very well be because they're students of Likus 101. They're yeah, and... And so the, there are women out there who are feeling pretty low, and where do they go? Bars. That's where you find them, at bars. No, sometimes girls just go to bars to hang out with their friends. They Darling, let me tell you something. When girls are at a bar on February 14th, they are there for a specific reason. Yeah, maybe that is true. And those are those girls who like fried because a while you'll hair, be black there, roots, while you while looking. you're there with whatever you picked up at the hustler shop or whatever, uh, with your boyfriend on February the fourteenth, and while you're eating dinner or whatever it is you're doing, there are going to be girls out at bars getting drunk. And when those okay, girls yeah. are out there getting drunk, my boys are moving right in. Okay, and then your guys are low lives. Once they just want to be with one girl, you treat each other right. You both pay for each other. We you don't want each that. Other, you help each other out. We don't want you that. Want you, you can have sex anytime you want because you're with no, that person. No, no. And, and by the way, that, that that is so rare. Generally, when a woman gets us to sign off on moving in or being in a relationship, the sex starts to dwindle. That's what generally happens. Even if it doesn't happen with you, it generally does happen. Well, Why I would any man sign on for that? I know you had past failed relationships many times. In past Every man marriage. listening has had past failed relationships. So what? I'm sure you have past failed relationships. That's true. And I got out because as soon as a guy turned there you like, go. thought he can take advantage of me or thought he can disrespect well, me, there you I go. left him but, like that. Like anybody who had to listen to this, for example, uh, this trap going on and on and on, uh, given all this lip, I guarantee you most of our guys wouldn't want to listen to it anyway. Yeah, most of your guys smoke pot. That's why 
why they say take me on bong style. Don't you think that's pretty lame and low life? No. They don't have real jobs because they smoke can't get pot like, smoke pot all day. I've they, smoked pot myself. Why would I Why would I think that's oh low life? Oh, yeah, there you go. Now I got you have just lost like so many listeners just by that. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm losing <laughs> listeners because the listeners all hate the, when the guy smokes pot on the radio. Yeah, that's yes, right. True. They hate when musicians smoke pot. They hate when... I am Musician. Rappers I smoke pot. Oh, yeah. Years. Yeah, I know. All those rappers who smoke weed all the time, they're so unpopular. Yeah, like that is like the low life of, okay, you can't even get like an respectable job. You want to get a college, oh, you want to go, you have to get a drug goodness. test. Are you, you calling, where are you calling from, job. Pleasantville? I mean, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Is this, uh, is, uh, do, 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 are you the granddaughter of Ozzy and Harriet? I mean, who are you? I am a very respectable girl. I am like a girl that like is rare in this world. I don't go around mm, like being boy. nasty with all these guys. I don't, like I don't try. If someone disrespects Ugh. me, then I leave them. I don't. Pain. Are you like, twerking in my ear? What are you? How doing? does your boyfriend maintain an erection listening to this? I don't know how he does it. Okay, because I am like hot, and yeah, my boyfriend is hot. And it doesn't matter like, how hot together. you are. You know, when that mouth opens up, <laughs> all arousal goes right out the window. Oh, yeah, like, no, he, oh, you don't even know. He, me and him, we fight, like, back and forth. I bet you do. Laughing at the end. Because mm. he, like, we both respect each other. He might call me stupid one time, mm. I'll call him stupid right back. Oh. We're equal on each other's page. If so so he to... knows you're stupid, and he's told you so. Oh, I am stupid. Who's the one to call a name? Your now? boyfriend you called you stupid. Your boyfriend called you stupid. If your boyfriend thinks you're stupid, how, who am I to argue with? Okay, my boyfriend never thinks I'm stupid. We're Why does he call you stupid that? if he doesn't think you're stupid? We, we both laugh at your show. Like, your show is ridiculous. Like, oh, you disrespect I living. see. You call, like... Okay. Can't use that term on the air, darling. Uh, you and your filthy mouth. There, there is something called the FCC, oh. and you can't speak like that. And oh, you know okay. what the you limitations say, you are. You know what the limit. You say girls. Yes, I can, but you cannot use uh, 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 vulgar terms on the air. You can't do it. Okay, that was a very vulgar term. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was. Oh, yeah, and the stuff you say is not vulgar. Uh, well, uh, well, I'll tell you, you what. Cer that, certain things pass muster with the federal government. Others don't. Calling you a human toilet is perfectly acceptable. Using no, the term not. you used is I not acceptable. I've on your show before that you said you did not like if someone is, like, disrespected or whatever, especially a child. You have said that. If someone's being disrespected, even a child. Okay, say a girl is being molested when she's 16 years old. When she turns 18... Do you think that anyone, like, okay, then any guy can take advantage of her because well, she has bad self-esteem? We've right? had this conversation horrible. in past years uh, in this classroom. And the bottom line is, are you saying that somebody who uh, had a problem when she was a child uh, yes. or a teenager, are you saying then she has no right to ever have a sex life? She, of course, has a right to that. Uh, Great. Like, so but, then why, okay, would, why wouldn't a man say, okay, I'm going to have sex with you? Okay, but then if the guys are all taking advantage of her because she has really so low self-esteem and like she's messed up in the head from that, then all guys should just come and take advantage. No, of her. No, no, but she's not under any obligation. We're not recommending rape here, dear. We the, okay, we are recommending okay. that consenting adults have sex with each other. Consenting adults. I don't care what the reason is why they consent. I only care that they do. No, because, okay, if you're saying if a girl's at a bar and she has low self-esteem, right. every guy should jump in on that. That's day. right. I'm, I'm telling them over. February 14th. I'm telling them like, the specific day. I'm telling them bars to go to, yes, because they will get laid. Because women with low self-esteem will be crying into their drinks. Oh, nobody loves me. And we come right in there. We'll love you for a couple hours, and then we'll get the hell out. Okay, so it's, oh, okay, I see how it is. Yeah, so the girls that are set up to do that, those are just girls with low self-esteem. Who cares? Bad moral values. Oh, as long as they I, look hot, we, we don't care. I ho You know what? I, I once expressed this as a mathematical equation on the air. Men want to get women of the highest possible attractiveness level and the lowest possible self-esteem. It's expressed in terms of a fraction. And usually the girls with the most high self-esteem are the most beautiful and the most successful. And the girls with low self-esteem are usually... That's not true. But you're, but you're but Dear, and here's where your inexperience comes in and the fact that you've never dated women, so you don't know what really goes on with women except for your six dysfunctional friends. Like but, the, but the bottom line here, dear, is having dated hundreds of women, let me tell you what really goes on. And that is the hotter, the hotter a woman... I'm not talking about having relationships, dear. We're talking about getting laid. That's two different things. Uh, 
I don't claim to be a, I don't claim to be a relationship expert. I'm a getting laid expert. And one thing I can tell you is that attractive women have low self-esteem. The hotter they are, the lower the self-esteem. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because women who are really hot are very hard on themselves. They are perfectionists. The woman who wakes up one morning 109 pounds, who was 108 pounds yesterday, will be very hard on herself. A woman who's very perfect looking breasts, one is slightly larger than the other, will be hard on herself. Women have a zit one zit it one day so a woman's a 10 and i'm telling you that has been my experience i know myself as a girl of how to say how are you to say what i think i i don't care what you think you are one person you're one person i don't care what you think is irrelevant this is based on this is based on a lifetime this is based this is based on a lifetime of dating hot chicks something you have not done you don't have the experience i have you don't know what i know let me tell you something okay all you know is what you we don't care about you Okay, and if you're going to talk about your six friends, we don't care about them either because you're. You won't even let me talk because you know I. You have to. No, you talk continuously during this conversation, and I'm telling you that all we care about is getting laid, and the hotter the chick, the lower the self-esteem. Okay, I'll agree with you on something. I agree that you can lay get laid anytime you want if you want to go get your self-esteem. Those girls with the bad self-esteem, like there you go. Thank you. Ugly girls. That's right. They're not beautiful. They are. No, like, they're not oh, ugly, dear. The ugly girls. You. By the way, go. I'm going to prove to you the ugly girls have the highest self esteem because they're I the ones. They're the ones on the daytime talking. No, you didn't. You know, the, they're those chicks. They're the chicks who are large and in charge and they're fives and they're standing around with the big booties walking around screaming with the fake nails and everything. They've got very high self esteem. And they're, st- you know, stampeding around the stage like a bunch of rhinoceroses. Meantime, the hot chicks are the ones who say, I don't know, I'm fat. I feel fat. I feel ugly. I, 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 I'm blonde. Yeah, I wish I was brunette. Is- I'm brunette. Oh, I wish I was a redhead. Are you kidding? Having those moments and where you feel that's bad right, and and the, uh, and, and the hotter you are, the more mean, moments like that you have. No, the harder you are on yourself. Well, I'm telling you from experience, hey, dear, something you, you don't have. Sister, you don't like, have it. Like, I don't care about your sisters. We're not talking about you. your sisters you. are just clones of you. We don't really care yeah, about them. Exactly. I'm talking about a country of 150 million women, and I'm telling you, with the experience I've had dating hundreds of hot chicks, the yeah, hotter the chick, the lower the self-esteem. Okay, let me ask you something else. You okay, don't you know. If you believe any, you can go out and get any girl you want. Okay, so then um, how I've many done pretty well so have far. You contracted in your life, how many diseases have you contracted? In I your use life? condoms, dear. I don't contract diseases. Okay. I use okay. condoms. How many herpes do you have, or warts do you have? Those I, oh, please, condoms. hang on a second here, dear Jake. What did you want to say to Carrie? Uh, Tom. Uh, do you think this chick's boyfriend gone out and got a gun yet so he can blow off his head? I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How could you listen to this chick talk day after She's day? She's proving my point here. Drive off a cliff. Wait, what is this? Okay, yeah, you would drive off a cliff because you, you just want to use a girl for her vagina. That's it. I see how it is. That's you how it is. Off a cliff, you pothead. What do you think go. young men want to do? Bang, 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 bang. That's all they want to do. You're they going. want to have fun and go out. That's what, what do you think a young male's meant to do? He's meant to breed. Jesus Christ. He's meant to breed? What are you talking no, we about? No, we want to listen to her go on about? and on and on and on like this. Oh, that's what men want, sure. I want to ice for my ear to listen to you, Carrie. You know Jesus Christ. on and on? Because you're a pothead. That's why you talk on and on and on. You no, it's you talk on and on and on. And on. It's you. That's a girl's point. That's a girl's job is to put the guy's way on straight. Next time you do that, I'm hanging up on you. Tom, this girl's got some real class. What? This girl's got some real class. Yeah, yeah, you with the F word now, but putting the F word in on the air. Don't don't you try that again. Okay. Okay. It's showing how bright you are, too. Now, when you are are, are losing the argument, when you're losing the argument, you revert to your lack of education by using vulgarity. Did you know that? I haven't used any vulgarity during this call. Not one word of vulgarity has yeah. taken place during this call. Not one. Oh, yes. What did you just say? Yes. What do you do all throughout? Like, you constantly could talk vulgarity. That's no, I, I do don't. I, actually, I don't. Uh, Jake, thank you. Let me get Ellie on here. Ellie, what did you want to say to Carrie? Okay, Carrie, you're completely wrong. Let me put something straight for you because I don't think you're well educated. One, you as well guy. as, no, you have to listen. This is your problem. You don't know how to listen. That's why you have so many problems in your relationship, okay? So, firstly, oh, you crazy? as equal as guys like to have sex, as equal as girls love to have sex, okay? Yeah, Valentine's oh, Day, girl no, knows God. for a fact they want to get laid. What girl does it? 
don't play the act like you don't like to, ha- like, have sex. Come on. It's a need. Sex is food for your body. Listen to my words. Sex is food for your body. You have no brains at all. Okay, I never no, I do have brains. Do you problems. Have I never said reality. that a girl wants a less than a guy. I never said I had relationship problems. I never said a girl wants Honey, a less than a guy. Before you say so, one yes. word, because you're just running your, like, have on sentence. But let me tell you something, okay, because you do not make sense whatsoever. Every sense. girl likes to have sex. It doesn't matter if they try to play this conservative whatever. We love to have sex. It's very easy. You just spread your legs. Let me guess. Let me guess. You're going to do it's food for your body, okay? Very simple. Understand oh, that. No, and yeah. if you say, no, no, it's not, oh, God, okay? Men are here to breed, and we're here to produce the babies on this world. That's how life is. And if you can tell him how he feels about you producing babies on this world. So just spread your legs, Carrie. That's that's what uh, Ellie is trying to say. And you know what? No, you know what, Carrie? And if you spread your legs and shut your trap. If you were to have more sex, Carrie, you would have less stress and you wouldn't be arguing about this. Okay, I've had more sex. You you show how much I have. Oh, she wants to tell you what she's had. She's been having sex this whole time. While she's been talking, she's been having sex. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah she's been riding you know? her boyfriend like a pony and calling in at the same time. That's how much sex she has. Oh, my gosh. I'm talking to such uneducated people. No wonder it's like yeah, a on a radio t- station. Oh, my gosh. Problem. I totally cannot believe this. Well, I, well, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- no, I'll tell you, nobody can believe this. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is, me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our show, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likes Show. Professor at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Arthur. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello, Tom. Long time, first time. Yes. All right, I have a story for you. I got, I met up a girl on MySpace, all right? Like, it took me two minutes to meet her online, 10 minutes to drive over a park, 10 minutes later, and 10 minutes later in the back of my car. And it's been going on like that for a couple months. And she was the type of chick, like, I even, like, like did her in front of my friends in the jacuzzi in front of people, you know? And all of a sudden she starts telling me that, you know, like, I don't want to do, I don't want to have sex anymore. I don't want to, I'm not going to do anything until I get married, this, that. And she's only 18 and I'm only 20. You know, I told her, I'm like, I'm not going to get married until I'm, like, 25. And uh, she's been, like, talking to me, like, on and off, like, let's go on a date, this, that, whatever. But I only, I haven't even spent a dime on her. For the couple months, all we doing, have been doing is having sex. And now, I don't know, should I just, like, let her go? But she keeps on calling me. Uh, well, you ice her. I'm sorry? Ice her. And put her on ice. Put her on ice? Yeah. Like, uh, only talk to her every two or three calls or less. She calls me. She doesn't call me for, like, she calls me every, like, weekend. Like, Well, you don't have like, to pick up the phone every weekend, do you? No, but, I mean, I don't even have to worry about that. I mean, I have chicks on the side. I don't have to worry about having sex. That's not the thing. No, it's I like, understand like, that. But, but but the thing is, I'm, this is how you, you, it's like training a puppy. <laughs> it's housebreaking. Uh, but the other thing was, like. You have to, rest- if she is not going to give you sex, you have to restrict her from getting what she wants, which is access to you. Uh, but the thing is, like, before that, she all, like, she had she had guys she used to go to, you know, but she, like, left everyone. Now, she's just sitting at home. Like, the only thing I liked about her is, like, she lived close to my workplace. Like, at lunchtime, she would come, you know, and it would be easy for me. Like, I had it, like, every day at lunch, you know. It was all good. Now, like, she won't even come to lunch and this, that. Like, she did, she'll only want to talk. Like, that's all she wanted to want to do. Yeah, well, then don't waste your own time. Get it from other chicks. Yeah, true. You tell her when she's ready to have sex, you're ready to see her on a regular basis. But 
uh, not until you're having sex. It's not going to happen. So you think I should just, like, not answer her phone calls or answer and just tell her straight up, like, either that or we don't see each other? I would put her on ice for a week or two, and then when she, uh, when you finally do talk to her, tell her what I just told you. All right. All right, Tom. Can you do me a, can you take me a Kobe style? I don't think we have time because we're at the end of the hour, but I do thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.